Hello, friends. All right, are we ready for part two of our beautiful little penguin here? Let's, uh, let me just walk through some of the uh, supplies that I'm using. So yesterday I was sharing, um, I typically am using my Artisto pads, which I love. They are absolutely fabulous. Um, and I have tried all kinds of paper because of my events. Um, I've tried finding good paper that isn't too pricey, but a good quality. And these have just been amazing. So if you haven't tried these, try them. Um, what's also nice is I have explained you know, I keep all these different paintings in here so I can reference back because it's on this nice spiral, ba uh, spiral bound and they have perforation. So if you did want to tear them out and gift them, you can do that. But I date all mine and it's really fun. I just, I, I love these. I'm a total fan and I am not affiliated with them. I wish I was because I love their product. So today though, because I wanted a larger sheet of paper, I'm working on an Arches, which is beautiful paper, but I don't use every day because it's a little bit pricier. Um, and this is a nine by 12 because I wanted to do this a little bit larger. Uh, and this is hot pressed and I'm only using the hot press because it's what I found in my um, stock of paper it's a beautiful paper it has a little the hot press has a rougher texture which i think is really great for um, florals and landscapes because it has that beautiful texture and it's very organic looking uh, it's just a preference thing it's quite heavy and again it's got a lot of texture so i'm doing that um, using that for this little guy today and I'm using, I will switch back and forth between my absolute favorite Velvet Touch Princeton uh, number eight round and my Degato, which again, these are really reasonable. I share these all the time. You can get a whole set. I think it's for $12 and I've really been kind of shocked how nice they are. They've kept their point and they're a great uh, brush. So I'm using that. I've got my two containers of water, um, one to wash, one to rinse, and I've got my palette. I will just get this out of the way right now because you all ask me every time you see it. Um, this is by Mist Ceramics. She did this for me. It's custom, but you, I always link her site. Again, I'm not affiliated with her, but I know you all have loved this. I requested the little daisies on them and she did that for me because she knows I love my wildflowers. She also designs all my palettes for my events, which are beautiful. And then I have my smaller rinse cup. These also come with the palette. And I think that's all my supplies. Yesterday, these are the colors that I focused on, uh, Windsor Newton paints. So I used Opera Rose, Violet, uh, cerulean, olive green, and sap green, I always mix together. And then my cat orange and my cad yellow, which I thought just went so beautifully with the opera rose. That's always such a beautiful combination for flowers. Um, so today we'll be using some of that as well. If you have this wonderful, I'm hooked on this Mylang palette, um, they have a lot of the same colors, so you're fine there. Um, but today I will use my Windsor Newton. And I think that's all. If you guys are liking these, please um, press the like button because it just, I kind of go through those and see what you all are liking. And although I paint every day just what is inspiring me and what wakes me up in the middle of the night, and I'm like, I want to paint this like this little flamingo guy I was up at two in the morning drawing him. Um, but it helps me kind of see what you guys are enjoying. So thank you um, if you are showing me that. And last thing, let's see. I will be using for this little peony, I will be using um, a 
kind of wet on dry, wet on wet. And I'm also gonna do some lifting for some of the tips of the little petals, um, just to show some highlights. And I left this drawn out a little bit darker, but what I'm going to do is just use my little eraser here and just lighten it up a bit so it doesn't, because some of these leaves are going to be quite transparent. So I want to just lighten them a little bit so they don't completely show through. I'm so sorry, somebody's knocking at my door. Um, so I wanted you to see the flower drawn first, but now I just took, I shared this with you yesterday, these wonderful little kneaded erasers. They're like $3 or something. And um, they're really great for lightening up your pencil marks so they don't completely show through your paint because watercolors are so transparent. All right, let's get started. The colors I'm going to focus on in this beautiful little peony will be somewhat the same as our little flamingo here, except for I'm hoping I will have a little bit darker values in um, some of the petals. So what I will do is if you're using your um, My Lang palette, you can use their Rose Matters, really beautiful. If you don't have that Rose Matter um, for Windsor Newton, you can just mix up a little bit of the um, Opera Rose, which is one of my absolute favorite colors. It's so beautiful. I know somebody bought it recently and was asking me. It is quite shocking pink, which I think goes well with the uh, Flamingo. But um, if you want to darken it just a tiny bit, you could add some of your Windsor Newton Quinn Magenta in there and it'll just deepen it a little bit. And I think we're ready to go. So with this drawing, and I will put this all together in a little tutorial kit um, for you as well. And it'll have the drawing, it'll have day one, a picture of what you do day one and some instructions, and then day two is today. So I'll put that all together for you when I'm finished here. Uh, the other color that I'm using is I mixed some of this uh, Opera Rose with a little bit of the uh, Cat Orange, and it gave me this beautiful orangey uh, color that I think is really pretty. And I might use that for some little touches and highlights. Okay. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and get started here. What I'm going to do is I'm wetting my brush and I'm going to pick up this beautiful shade here. This is where I mixed some of the Queen Magenta and the Opera Rose. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here. But remember, we always want to start lighter value because we can always go darker. So picking that up, if you feel like you have a little bit too much water, just dab it off and you'll see any drips. You don't want any drips. And then let's just go ahead and go in and start painting all these little petals. So I'm using the side of my brush and I'm just laying down this color, just like that. Now that is, and this happens a lot when I use, oops, let's get rid of that. Got a drop of water there. Um, a lot of times when I use this Opera Rose because it's just so shocking pink and, and vibrant. So what I just did is I took my brush and I rinsed it off and then I dried it off so it's just damp. You don't want it too wet. And I'm going to go in, and you've seen me do this a lot, and I'm going to just kind of pull out and feather that edge, just like that. So isn't that beautiful? It really, I like my paints to always have this beautiful feather soft edge. So that's 
just my thing. That's why I love watercolors. And there you go. Now the next thing, I'll go ahead and move on to my next petal. And so I'm picking up some more of that upper rose and I don't wanna to get too nitpicky here and because there's a lot of tiny little petals. So I'm trying to keep this somewhat easy. I'm just gonna go in and start and I'm using the tip of my brush so when you want to use the get really just the tip of your brush you don't want to have your your brush held to the side because now you're using the whole side of your brush for the tip of the brush and those fine lines in detail you want to hold your brush up and very light pressure so now I will wash and rinse my brush tap it off and I'm just going to use that push and pull technique. Now, I don't want my brush to be too wet. And look at that, isn't that pretty? It just feathers out that edge. When this dries, we'll go back in and add some more color in there, maybe some purples and maybe some of this beautiful cerulean blue, um, because I just think that's so pretty and it kind of when I glaze it over this pink, it's going to turn this beautiful purpley color. Um, okay, let's go into this one. Pick up some of that paint. And I would stay away from this petal next to it because it uh, is wet. So now wash and rinse my brush, tap it off. Make sure you tap it off good. You just want it damp. And then just start feathering and pulling out that paint. You're just helping it along a little bit. Okay, so look at that beautiful blend. That I'm telling you, for me, this is the only medium I can get that. If you wanted, we could go in and just take, let's just see what this might do. This is that cerulean blue. Actually, I think it's called sky blue in my lane. But uh, if you take your ultramarine blue from Windsor Newton and you add a little white, you can get that real pale uh, sky blue. Let's just see what happens if we touch in here. While this is wet, this won't work if it's not wet. And then rinsing and drying my brush <clears throat> so it's just damp. And look at that beautiful blend. It's all ready. Now you can just help it along. Just pulling it out with your damp brush and look how pretty that is. I think that's really, really pretty. So we'll do more of that kind of like a glazing technique once this starts to dry, but I don't really wanna to do too much of that right now because now it's drying and we'll get those blooms. Let's go ahead and move on to another petal here. So I'm picking up that opera rose and this is mixed just with a tiny bit of that Quin Magenta. And I'm going to just keep going into all these petals and doing that uh, push-pull technique. So I'm laying down my paint, wash and rinse my brush, and then go in and just push-pull and look at that beautiful feathering. So pretty, I just love that. Let's keep going. Now in the back, these back petals, we do wanna think about keeping them a little lighter because they're more in the foreground. So just something to keep in mind. Again, I'm just barely using the tip, 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 the lightest pressure for my petals. And I might just do a few 
uh, right up here in front using a little bit of the side of my brush and just paint the whole thing. Now I like to leave some white space, so I'm doing that. So we might just go in and we can always go back in after two and darken up with some glazes some of these petals in front. Now don't freak out about how hard this looks to paint because you will have <clears throat> in the kit I'll put on Etsy, they're $10 you'll get this drawing. And you can use carbon paper. Um, there's all kinds of hacks out there. So just feathering all of these. And if I knew how to do editing, I could edit through this, but, so if you wanna fast forward through this, cause I'm just gonna repeat this on pretty much all of these petals. You could certainly do so. It's a little bit time consuming. There we go. Wash and rinse my brush, pull it out. There you go. And we'll just keep going. I think what I'll do is use a very light value. See how light that is? That's because I just have a tiny bit of paint and a lot of water. Because these petals in the foreground, we want to be rather light. Now again, it's so funny because I'm saying light, but look at how even when I try to get a light value, that opera pink is just crazy bright. So I'm just going to keep going in and we'll come back and darken some of these and painting. And I'm not painting the entire petal. I'm trying to keep a little bit of white in there. In the middle, we wanna keep open because we're going to put those little uh, sepals in there. So I'm just going around coloring in the bottom of these petals. I just tapped in there a little bit while that's wet and then blending it out. And I'm working, trying to stagger the petals I'm working on because I don't um, want them to all bleed in together. So that's kind of what you see me, why you're seeing me jump around. Okay. Let's go into this one now, because that's probably dry. And again, we'll go over this and just glaze. So wash and rinse my brush, dry it off, and then pull that out. And I, I rather like the idea of the ends of the petals having some white space in them. I think that's kind of cool. And then let's go into this one here. And this is really a lot of tiny work, which typically isn't my thing, but I thought this was kind of fun. Okay, so we're getting close here. I'm going to keep doing a few more of these. Just following the shape of this peony because these peonies are just like this bowl. And then wash and rinse my brush and just soften that up a little. There we go. Keep going. Again, you can fast forward through this if you like. This is really relaxing to me. Okay, and we will go in after we do all these and we'll just add some darker ones, add some lighter ones. I tend to at the base of the petal, 
try to keep in mind and keep it a little bit darker, wash and rinse, and pull out. Just because usually at the bottom of these petals, they're typically darker. There we go. And I will stagger, try to stagger a little bit those colors. And notice I'm keeping a lot in the middle uh, white because that's where we're going to have those little yellow uh, sepals. Okay, we're getting close here. So I like that, it's a little bit darker. Let me turn my paper here. There we go. And let's try and do this one here. Maybe we'll do that one a little bit darker. Just love these peonies. I think they are so gorgeous. I could paint them for days. And and FYI, I'm going to, one of my classes in um, August will be a step-by-step -step on drawing these peonies, by the way. And this is the worksheet that you'll get. So it has like, you start here, then you go here, then you go here, and then you go to the final and we add in the leaf. So I think that one's going to be really fun. I'm kind of excited for that. Now... I'm going to use a different value on this one that's tucked in here. So let me just pick up more paint. And let's make that one a little bit darker. There you go. Leaving some little white spaces around. Okay, so I think we're about, we're kind of getting there aren't we? Now I'm just coloring in some of those. These in the that are kind of tucked in. You can certainly go in and add some water, lighten them up. There we go. Okay, I think we've got quite a few of them. There's just a couple here. Let's do this one here. And again, you will have this drawing in the tutorial kit, so you don't have to worry about drawing all these little intricate petals, which typically I'm not, like I said, a detailed person, but so I'm just using the tip of my brush for all of these. So look at that, isn't that beautiful? Um, now what I think we can do is we can go in, here's another little petal back here. And we can start adding in a second glaze. So I wanna add in these front petals where it's kind of, tucked in there and I see I missed a petal here so let's do that one real quick I wasn't sure if that was his body I drew it but I couldn't remember and then go in and just push and pull like that okay let's go into this petal in the front here and I'm going to pick up some of this uh, blue like that. So if you are using Windsor Blue, you can just, I mean, they're basically the same colors in the Mylene palette, palette. It's light sky blue. And in the Windsor Newton, I just took uh, ultramarine blue or French blue. You can use any of those and added a little white to it. All right, so I'm going to go in And we're going to use that push and pull technique, but now we're kind of creating a glaze over this. So wet my brush. Oop. 
and just encouraging it to spread out just like that. So I think that's really pretty. And we can go in maybe here, do the same thing. So that's really what I'm going to do on all of these. It's just kind of going into the base of the flower and pushing and pulling. Make sure that the uh, flower, I mean the flower petals that you're going into are nice and dry. There we go. Wash, rinse my brush and just taking damp with the tip of my brush and pulling out. Yeah, I like that. I think that's really, really pretty. Just tapping in there. And we could even go in with, um, let's just try for fun some of this color. And what this is, is it's just an opera rose with a little bit of that orange in it. Let's just see what this looks like. Hopefully I don't ruin this right now. I think this could be kind of pretty too. Maybe go in and tuck in some of these. Yeah, I like that color. So wash and rinse my brush. That's just the same technique over and over. The damp brush. Yeah, I think that creates some fun interest. So again, that's just Opera Rose and a little Cad Orange. I'm just going into the base of some of these petals and then pulling it out. I think it adds a little depth and interest. And maybe let's go into this one, pick up some of that Uh, opera rose and use the side of my brush and come up. So this is definitely some glazing techniques. Now I'm just going to leave the edges of those as they are. I think that's really pretty. And working with a little bit more of that blue. Ooh. Using the side of my brush. Like that. I think that's really pretty. So that's that sky blue. And I'm mixing it with this pink. I think that's really a pretty color. I really want to darken some of these petals right in front. There we go. That's pretty. Let's try some of that because I kind of like that orangey color. Again, I'm doing this with you, so these glazes can just be so beautiful if you use a light value because that's the beauty of watercolor. Just kind of going over. Look at how that immediately popped out that petal. I think that's really pretty. And I'm going to throw in maybe a little bit of that purple, the violet here. And do a glaze using the side of my brush. Look how beautiful that is. So using those dark colors really popped that out. And I'm mixing the violet with my opera rose. Look how beautiful that is. Really, really pretty. I think I might, now that's a little bit darker than what I wanted, so add a little bit of water. And I'm just using the side of my brush to go in there and pull some of these out. Just with this glaze, there you go. That 
that's too dark, you can dry off your brush and go in and pull that out. Just pick it up. Yeah, I'm really liking this. Let's go in the middle so you can get an idea and pick up some of our pad yellow. There we go. And you can use a little darker value of that because I really want it to pop. And I'm going to put in these little just with the tip of my brush. Just dabbing in. And look how pretty that is. Oh goodness. All right, let's let this dry a tiny bit. And then we'll maybe go in and add some kind of shadowy areas on some of these. But I felt like I wanted to add a few little feathers in the back there. So going back to my upper rows and adding in, you could really even add in some of that yellow. And it creates this beautiful peachy orangey color. And I will go in and just put a few little feathers here. And how I'm going to do that is just push down with the tip and draw it out, just like that. Yeah, I like that. Might add a little bit more pink to that. I felt like it needed to look a little bit more like petal, I mean, uh, little feathers. We could even use some of our purple, but very watered down, our violet in Windsor Newton. I don't wanna to get too much, something like that. Yeah, I like that. Just love these little guys. I think they are so cute. If it feels too dark, you can wipe your brush off and go in and pick it back up, just like that. And then maybe just add a glaze to show a little bit of a shadow down there. So I'll pick up some of that purple, very light value. And let's just go in and Yeah, because I don't like any hard edges, I'm just dampening my brush and going to lighten that a tiny bit. But I think I, I, need, I felt like I needed that. Maybe one more glaze, going back to that upper pink <clears throat> with a little bit of that orange in there. Maybe even let's just throw in a tiny bit of purple. Oh, that got a little muddy. Okay. And I feel like I just want to add a few little things here and there. And adding some water because I don't like those hard edges. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Just add it in a little bit more. I feel like I want to add a tiny bit of cad yellow, and then we'll get back to those flowers. So get, grabbing a light value and then just tapping my brush on the side, and I'm gonna go in. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Now it's a little vibrant, so I wash and rinse my brush and lightening that up. Wash and rinse my brush and lightening that up. Yeah, I like that. And when it dries, it'll dry a little bit lighter. Okay, maybe just a tiny bit here. Lighten it up. 
Just going in with a damp brush. There we go. Okay, back to these little flowers. Now, you could almost stop here, and I think this is really beautiful. I'm feeling like I want to add in a little bit more depth. I really like all the white that I've left, but I'm going to add just a few more little things here. Uh, let's see, let's add in some little lines. And you could really just keep playing with this and getting darker in between. So wash and rinse my brush. Pull that out, just like that, and just creating those deep little colors. Um, I want to go in here and darken that up, so I will create a little bit more of that Quinn and Opera Rose and go in here. And add in, be careful, make sure those little sepals are all dry. And then wash and rinse my brush. And pull that out. I think it kind of pulls in a little bit and creates a little bit of depth in here. Maybe just like that. Yeah, I think it kind of draws in. And maybe this one here. There we go. I mean, really, right now, you could be done with it. I'm going to go in and create kind of a dark purpley color here and really deepen in the middle. Now be careful because you don't want to be like me and I can tend to overwork. Just rinsing and drying my brush off and pulling out. Yeah, I think that creates some depth there. So there you go. I think I'm going to stop. What I'm going to do is just finish off with these flowers. So I'm going to grab my sap and my olive green and paint in these little leaves. So point, press, There we go. And just a little wiggle there. Wiggle, wiggle. Let's do another one here. Wiggle, wiggle. I think that's kind of pretty. And use my olive green, which is just a little darker. And tap in there. At the base of the petal. If you want, again, you could play with lifting and just lift up a little bit of that. And let's create another petal coming out here. So picking up more of my green and maybe a little right here like that. And vary the... Uh, leaf sizes, pick up a little more olive and sap green. I feel like we could use maybe one coming out here. So point, press, point, press, like that. Yeah, that's pretty. Point, press, just a little one. 
And there you go. I feel like I might just take a very pale green and have one coming out in the back. So that isn't pale enough like that. And that kind of makes it look like it's coming out from behind. If it's not pale enough, you can go in, wipe your brush and just pick up a little bit of that. See that depth? Oh, I just love that. Something like that. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, well, I think I'm done. I could, you know, fidget with this more, but I really like what we've done here. Uh, we could always go back in and add some darker values, but I was trying to keep this kind of light and pastel-y. So I think I'm going to end right here. I will put all of this in, um, like I said, that tutorial kit so you don't have to worry about um, trying to paint this and while I'm talking here I'm just going to go in and maybe touch around some of these little steeples just to kind of fill in yeah I like that a little bit better it didn't like quite that much white in there yeah that's pretty all right everybody I hope you enjoyed that please um you know, if you do like it and you enjoyed it, just like it for me so I can go back in and kind of see what people are enjoying and um, I can do more of that. Uh, this next month, I plan to have, um, in August, that is some more um, classes. I've had so much fun meeting you guys on Zoom and I think what we'll do this next month is it's going to be all about these fun little uh, creating these fun wreaths with all these fun tropicals and uh, we will also do the peony class. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. I will put uh, my supplies in the bottom and have fun with this. I will do my best to get the... Um, drawing and the little tutorial kit up on Etsy. They're only $10 and you get a picture of the um, original and all the little extras. So it makes it a lot easier for you to do this. All right. Thank you so much.